Zan, how to be more productive using the traffic light of life. Yeah, our, our son Cameron, when he was little, we were at a pizza restaurant and he was so small, he was standing up in the booth and we were playing with uh, colors and that sort of thing. And I said, um, uh, what does green mean? He said, green means go. And I said, what does red mean? He said, red means stop. I said, what does yellow mean? He said, look out. <laughs> He had a sense of humor even at that age. Um, I'm going to start you. Well, where I'm going to teach today, I am stealing from a really good friend of mine. His name is Brian Wright. He, I've known him for 40 years, I guess. He runs a nationwide mortgage company, all their retail sales. I was in his office a couple of weeks ago, and he just did this in a matter of like two minutes, went through this. And I was like, whoa, 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 stop. Take me back through what you just did. And I, I, I remember scribbling it down. I always scribble when I'm in his office. Scribble down what it was. I called him the other day. I said, look, you got to take me back through this because this is powerful stuff. He goes, oh, that little thing. I was like, no, this is not a little thing. It's powerful. Yeah. Here's Brian Wright's quote. And, I, and for those of you listening, I want you to write this down because if you are in the sales industry of any nature, if you run your business or if you run your life, mm -hmm. and of course, if you're not running your life, who is? I want you to write down this quote, Brian Wright, my buddy. If you measure it, you can manage it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can manage it, you can perfect it. Let me do this again, right fast. If you can measure it, you can manage it. If you can manage it, you can perfect it. His philosophy is, and he's run, and I think he's got like 1,700 people that work with him. Mm -hmm. And it, his whole world is, if you can measure it, you can manage it. If you can manage it, you can perfect it. So we'll measure, and then we'll manage that measurement and see how we can do it better. So today is all about taking a stop and measuring and managing the way you use your time because we're all given the same time. So some people, I know I've run real estate companies for 30 years and I'm always amazed at how one agent in one office can be super efficient, making tons of money next door, same company, same environment, same advertising, same opportunities, starving to death. And the truth is, it's how you manage your time, what you do with it. So, um, and this applies to anyone in sales, anyone in, in business. Let's start with what I call pie time. Pie? Pie, P-I-E, pie time. Okay. I like a good piece of pie. Pumpkin pie is one of my favorites. It, really? This is pumpkin pie time. Oh yeah, I like, like a piece of pumpkin pie. My wife likes cold pumpkin pie for breakfast with a hot cup of coffee. Really? I did not know this. Oh, you don't disturb Laura if she knew. She'll go out on the back porch in the early morning, let the dog out a piece of pumpkin pie with a cup of coffee. That woman is as happy as she can possibly be. Duly noted. Okay. Yep. I, I'm not things, a pie fan. So things were well, pumpkin if, pie. You can even eat it crustless. It has almost no calories. Well, if it's the pie that makes me more efficient, I'm all about it. It's <laughs> a pie that'll make you more efficient. P I E. Okay. Productive time, indirectly productive time, and everything else. Pie. Mm -hmm. P time. I time. E time. P time is productive time. Productive time is spent face to face in a selling situation or a buying situation. In other words, when you go to meet with a client or you come to like my office or we meet for a business meeting, that's P time. You are making money there. That's when you sell your goods. That's when you do your product line. That's when you demonstrate your expertise. So anybody listening, your P time is productive time. It's what you get paid to do. Mm -hmm. If you're in the real estate business, this means you are face to face with a buyer or seller. You are showing properties. You are listing properties. You are doing the things that generate money. Fair enough? 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. I get it. Okay. Time. Productive time. Okay. I time is something we never think about. This is where all the money is made. This is where greats make fabulous money. I time is indirectly productive time. It is work that leads you to P time. Okay. So I talk about working on your business and working in your business. Right. When you work in your business, it's P time. You're doing what you're paid to do. I time is when you're working on your business. Mm -hmm. So time spent talking to new clients, generating an appointment, um, doing your marketing, watching your videos at the profit culture to learn more about your business that leads you to be more effective. Um, making phone calls, scheduling appointments, um, sending out emails, doing the things that generate face-to-face -face or money-making meetings. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yes, I would say that my indirect time, when we were talking about the um, Da Vinci schedule that I use, yes. my indirect time would be my 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., when oh, I'm, geez. when I'm working and those yes. are definitely my money-making times. Yeah. Because yeah. you, you are probably like I am now office door closed, isolated phones turned off. You're generating business. Well, it sets you up. It sets you up for the P time. Yes. Like, yes, cause yes, I yes. would not be successful during my productive time of making it rain and bringing in sales and stuff. If I had not set the stage and built the foundation to hold all that. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you a question. Can you control P time? In other words, can you wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to spend five hours with clients? Just can't do it. Can you control I time? Absolutely. Yes. You can say, I'm going to get up at 4 a.m. and work till 8. I've got a four-hour block here, and all I'm doing there is, is producing business. Yeah, because during the productive time, especially if it involves other people, right. that's tough to control. <laughs> right. You're, you're absolutely not in control. So yeah. if you want more P time, what should you allocate? More I time. Because mm -hmm. you're in control of I time. So indirectly productive time is within your control. It is your ability to build P time. Now, in our coaching programs over the years, I have studied time with thousands of people. And here's what I know. And I'm going to just guess at you. I would guess in a P time environment, you're worth thousand an hour, maybe two or 3000 per hour, mm -hmm. because that's what you do. All right. So how many hours of I time, how many hours of spending time generating business does it take you to get an hour in front of a client? Well, if it took you four hours to get in front of a client, you're worth $1,000 an hour when you do get in front of a client, then your I time is worth $250 an hour. So now you begin to work backwards and say, I can program all the money I want to make by saying, if, if this is how much time I have to spend in I time, in indirectly productive time, to generate a meeting with a client or a listing or a sales or whatever environment you're working in, then you can control your future. You can back up and say, if I spend this much time doing this activity, it generates that much act, that money. And I would dare say, the more, the more strategic you are, and the smarter you are at scaling your I time, the more money you will make at the P time because, and I'll give you a prime example. This morning, we had a learning opportunity where our graphic designer had produced something that kind of missed the mark, but the directions came from our account executive. So I had to take a moment to explain to her how the process worked in order to fine tune the brand story on this flyer. But instead of me just explaining it to her, I actually created a video, a teaching video. I took my eye time, created a powerful, powerful teaching video. And then we stuck that in our systems and processes. And now that one moment that I took during my eye time 
will scale and duplicate all the time and produce even more powerful collateral, more powerful training. And so I time is when you like maximize your, your, what you can do to maximize your P time. Right. And if you have staff like you do and you improve their productivity, Mm -hmm. it improves the whole company. And now we have moved this whole company forward. Right. Because if you're listening, are you paying attention? Because we're making you a world of money right now. Well, because you don't want to spend eye time with busy work. That's not what that is. And I think it's it's important for us to clarify that eye time is really, I would say your, I call it your deep flow, but it's the genius at work. It's not busyness. It's not busy. It needs to be maximizing P time. Here, let's maximize your and my P time. What are we doing here? We're online. We have our friends. Everybody's showing up. There's Daryl, Liz Belk's in the house and Valerie Blank, Wanda Walker. Everybody's here. Okay. This is I time because what we're doing here is teaching, learning, but we're also recording this session. It ends up in the profit culture. People pay to get to it later. Therefore, the geniuses are the ones here for free, paying attention every week. And we're making money down the road because when they tune in to the profit culture, it's P time for you and me. And we're not even there. Right. We've scaled We've scaled right. online. Mm-hmm. High time. P time is productive time. I time is indirectly productive time. E time is everything else. Mm-hmm. <sighs> everything. I mean, everything from eating your lunch to taking out the trash to going to the refrigerator to get a bottle of water to going down the hall to, to the kitchen. I mean, whatever it takes, that's everything else. But that sucks up a lot of your day. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to be more productive, if you want to have a more efficient life, you need to focus on reducing your e time, everything else. We can delegate, we can do things. Somebody out there is right now going, What about the traffic light? What about the traffic? I'm getting to the traffic light. E time's got to go away. Now, you can't eliminate everything. I mean, you, you got to go to the bathroom. You got to eat lunch. You got to get to the office. You, you got to answer phone calls and emails that have nothing to do with money to, today. But if you increase your I time and P time, productive time and indirectly productive time, if that's your focus each day, then you become a more efficient uh, business owner, salesperson, whatever you're doing. Mm-hmm. And you and I spoke about last week, I had brought up about how, you know, my husband with special forces, they've been trained to take a knee. Take a knee. And when it comes to the everything else, you really need to take a knee and examine what can you cut or how can you do something more efficiently? I mean, even like lunch, lunch should be prepped and ready to go. So you just pop it in the microwave and you're done, right? And there's certain tricks and hacks that you can do to make the everything else cut way down. It's right. kind of like budgeting in a way, you know, like it when is. you work on your budget and you got to cut out like the magazine subscriptions, you got to cut out all the little mis- right. miscellaneous things that eat up your money. Same yep. thing with time. It's always the little stuff. And, yeah. and with budget, it's exactly like, but it's always the little things. Yeah. Starbucks, five bucks a day, cup of coffee, stop. Come on people. There's coffee in the back of your building. My wife, we were traveling this weekend. There was a traffic line around this little coffee place. She goes, I'm amazed at people that still buy coffee from a coffee shop. Every office has coffee. And if you don't like the coffee in your office, get better coffee. Yeah. Buy the Starbucks stuff if you want it. But you're exactly right. It's the little things and Mm -hmm. that requires self-discipline. Yeah. So let's talk about the traffic light, the red light the green light and the yellow light. Y'all are beginning to see where we're headed. Um, This comes from my buddy, Brian Wright, and and he does this and recommends it to people to do this four times a year. And what we're going to do is encourage you to get a legal pad, nothing fancy. I I, I have my legal pads, but they're on the other side of the the camera, so I can't grab one. Uh, You need to get a legal pad. This is not something you're going to do on a big computer software or an Excel spreadsheet. Grab a legal pad. We're going to start this on a Tuesday. We're going to go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we are going to measure how you spend your time. 
no judgment, no worries. We're simply going to measure. All right. So this is measuring and tracking your time over a three day window, three days, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, because that's the middle of the week and Mondays are kind of wonky and Fridays are kind of crazy. So let's do a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, um, today is Tuesday. So we would have started this morning. So if you wanted to go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you start it tomorrow morning, get a legal pad, write down the day and the date. And then whatever time you are going to wake up tomorrow, in your case, it would be 4 a.m. Um, if you wake up at, 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 at 545 every day or 640, whatever time you wake up, write that down on the sheet. And beside that, write the word bathroom. Because if you're like most people, as soon as you wake up, you go to the bathroom. Use the bathroom, brush your teeth, take a shower, whatever you got to do. So when you're finished in the bathroom, write down the time underneath it. Well, if you got up at 5.45, it's now 6.45. You're dressed and ready to go to work, but you got to eat breakfast. Write down breakfast. At, at 6.45, at 7.15, drive to work. 7.30, Whatever. You, you with me? Mm -hmm. All day long. Don't judge. Don't care. Just write down every activity from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed. If you spend three hours watching um, television, write it down. If you've ever been on a diet, this is like journaling your food. Well, yeah. Yeah. You know, when you have to write down, I'm getting ready to eat a whole bag of Doritos, yeah, you rethink that. But this is simply, and don't judge yourself. Don't worry about it. We'll get to the traffic light. I'm coming. Write down everything. Mm -hmm. And here's what you'll find. If you are honest with yourself, there are things that are time sucks out of your day. They just suck the day right away. Um, think about this way. If you work with six people in your building and every day you walk in that building and you spend 10 minutes with each person being a good friend, that's an hour a day, five days a week. 20 days a month is 20 hours a month. In a year, that's 240 hours. That is six work weeks mm -hmm. spent talking to people just visiting how's your mama you know what y'all have for dinner last night chit chat now i know you got to be social but come on here if you're running a company or you're in the sales business those people don't pay you to talk to them you get paid to do what you do best that's where you become efficient Come in the door, get your coffee. How are y'all doing? Get to work. Save six weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, ready for the traffic light? Mm -hmm. When you hear this, you're going to go, really? All that just for that? On Friday, take an hour. On Friday, take an hour and take your legal pad and get three colored highlighters. Get a yellow one, a green one, and a red one. See where we're going? You get three highlighters and you go through your three days of legal pages. Come on. And you go through each one. Now, green are money-making activities. What did I do? So you start reading. Well, going to the bathroom isn't money-making and eating breakfast and driving to office isn't and this and Oh, here I met with a client. Highlight that in green. Mm-hmm. If it was phone calling to talk to somebody, highlight that in a Zoom meeting that made me highlight that in green. All right. The yellow are things that you have to do and they're necessary, but they could be deleted. So uh, this morning I had a letter to write. I could have stopped and written that letter. But there's somebody outside this wall that gets paid to write those letters for me. I mean, that's their job. Mm -hmm. I give them purpose for the day. Mm -hmm. I need a letter. Here's what it needs to say. They bring it back to me. I edit, go away. They fix it and come back, edit, go away. I'm not writing the letter. It's their job. It can be delegated. Now, 
I can see by the lineup here, I've got a bunch of realtors. And the worst thing realtors think is I'm the only one on earth that can do it. Right. And I'm sorry, but you're just not that good. <laughs> and neither am I. There's a million people that can sit in this chair and do my job every single day. Maybe not a million. All right. A few thousand. You're not the only one. Okay. Delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Wright tells me that every morning he gets up and he goes, this is my important things to do. And these are the things that I can delegate. It's how you get to run a company of 1700 people because mm -hmm. <laughs> You can't do it all yourself. So yellow is basically slow down, re-examine this. Should I be doing this or someone else? Right. right. Take a knee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I'm going to put that in my next book, by the way. It's a leadership mm -hmm. principle that's fabulous. Stop. Mm -hmm. Take a knee. Do I really need to do these things? Right. Right. So I've got green marks. Yoo-hoo! Money-making activities. Yellow marks could be deleted, could be delegated, Red, <laughs> these are the time-wasting activities. Did you really need to spend a half hour on YouTube yesterday afternoon watching that puppy play? Do you really need to go to Facebook? I mean, come on, people. Right. The, you talk about the biggest time, what the number one time waster in the world is email. Mm -hmm. If you're not managing your email inbox, all that crap, I probably, for every email I read, I block an email. I don't ever have to get junk email again, but they keep reinventing new ways. Facebook, Facebook is built. I know this is your wheelhouse, but it's built like a casino in Las Vegas. There yep. is no way out. If I ever go into Facebook, which is rare, I, I, I go, whoo, and then whoo, and you click on, ooh, and I'm so, look at that. It, it's a dog playing with a cow. It, that is a waste in your time. Yeah. Yep. Fully agree. Fully agree. And, and Amazon shopping, Facebook, emails. Um, I mean, it's just, and, and, and this thing, and you, you have talked about how powerful this is. Mm -hmm. And especially when you manage the use of it. And, yeah. And the key is managing the use of this. And, and, we're, and I think you've either done a session on this or getting ready to. Next week. Next, next week, week, we're going to talk about how to run technology so technology does not run you. People, do not miss next week. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you think this is good stuff, which is okay. What she's, don't miss next week. Because yeah. just simple little things that you're going to show us. And you've taught me some of this mm -hmm. before. Oh my God, it puts you in control. Well, and I think too, just knowing how to have a balance with it, because if you let it out of control, it'll suck you in. And before you know it, an hour of your life is gone. And right. so it's learning how to be able to be balanced in taking a break and enjoying something or just kind of vegging compared to allowing it to just take over your entire day. Right. And so how to have that control. And you have to have the de-stressors and, and I have some, but I program them into my day. I know exactly when they'll come. And, mm -hmm. and in, I had a doctor to tell my mother this years ago. He said, I can rest more in five minutes than you do all night. Hmm. And, and your husband, I guarantee you is the same way. If you get him still, he can go to sleep in a heartbeat. Can't he? Oh yeah. Immediately. Like, immediately. I mean, like in the middle of a Three, concert or something, <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> And then he's right back. Well, he's been trained or he's trained himself yeah. to rest when rest is available because in his job, that can mean the difference between life and death. I was making fun of him because the last uh, presidential debate, he fell asleep about one quarter of the way in. I'm like, how did you fall asleep with all that shouting? <laughs> yeah, with all that going <laughs> how on. How did you do that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, I have a sister that went to sleep in the last Star Wars movie as loud as that thing was. And they're blowing up stuff all over the theater. Yeah, she was gone. Yeah. Yeah. But but resting mentally. So back to my my streetlight. Yellow. A green is money. Yellow is things that you do that are necessary, but you can delegate. Red. We got to eliminate. Yeah. All right. Now you eliminate the red. You go through your day and go, where can I cut this out? 
-hmm. You delegate the yellow and you focus on the green activity. So now you come to work every day focused on money making activity. <gasps> what a concept. Yes. It's how entrepreneurs think. All right. Yes. But I think the key here is, is that you actually stop and think. Yes. Because I think that people, if, if we were driving down the road of life, right, you're just blazing through stuff, just following the traffic lights instead of at the moment actually pausing and figuring out what is eating your time, what can you delegate, and what is the most profit-producing activities for you. Right. I call it triaging your day. And, and there, there's constantly, well, I'll use this day as an example. Um, I had a presentation earlier today for a company in uh, Southern Florida. It was scheduled for 1045 this morning for an hour. So I knew I had a, a session, a break, and then to come back with you. Um, the problem is I get a, an email from them that says, Hey, we're finishing early. Can you come on at 10 AM? Well, I'm in the middle of a project uh, that I picked up by choice right before the uh, session through the project and floor, jumped on the session, finished up. Now I've got some time. All right. So I'm thinking about my day. I'm like, so I got Jamie from one to two. I got nothing this afternoon. I'm going to go have myself a fine big lunch. Go. I have a place where I love to eat outside. I'll take a good solid hour, maybe come back a little late, have a nice fine lunch. Okay. Then I realized you and I need to have a chat right afterwards. The company from Florida called back. They want access to the profit culture completely for all their folks. Um, I got a text out of Kansas said, can we talk at 2.30? Got one out of Ohio. Can we talk at 2.30? I now have a string of appointments. You're at 2, got a 2.30, got a 3.30, got a 4.30. Where did lunch go? Lunch was in the freezer in the back of the office. It was microwaved and eaten right before we got started. Lunch is gone. My afternoon completely changed. Mm -hmm. Triage. Now, let me tell you what my wife says was the most powerful thing I ever told her. Those of you listening, follow the money. Mm -hmm. Whatever activity you can do that's closest to generating a sale, closest to generating money, closest to generating income, follow that trail. If you get confused, follow the money. Well, every one of my appointments this afternoon is a direct link to money. Mm -hmm. I can do without lunch. I'm not going to starve and it'll be okay if you're hungry at the end of the day. You with me? You don't have to have a fine big lunch at, at the restaurant with your friends for two hours every day. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'd rather eat at my table and then uh, and this really comes out of a book called The Millionaire Mind mm -hmm. by um, Stanley and Danko. They studied millionaires for several years, wrote a series of books, The Millionaire Next Door, The Millionaire. This is The Millionaire Mind. And they said, wealthy people think different. They go, mm -hmm. I'll eat lunch, you know, out of a, uh, out of, you know, I have frozen food in the back. We got a microwave in a full kitchen. I heated up lunch. It was a great lunch. It was vegetables and proteins, just what you need. I ate a great lunch. They'll give up lunch at the country club mm -hmm. for generating money because that enables them to buy time later. Right. Red, right. yellow, and green. The traffic light of life. Stop the reds. Start the greens. Give away the yellows. Look out. That's what Cameron said. Yeah. Red means stop. Green means go. Yellow means look out. Yeah. Because that one will hurt you. Delegate you, more. When we last spoke about this and you were talking about taking the tasks and signifying them by these different colors. And I looked at my day and I didn't realize that I was doing this, but my day actually follows the traffic light pattern as well. Because in my mornings, when I do work, that is my green time, yep. you know, so I know that my 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., that is all green. That's a money making. And then I know that right at 9 a.m., when the rest of the world and the rest of the business world comes alive, that's all straight up yellow for me. I mean, yep. that's a yellow time for me, even though I'm 
talking with clients and making sales and doing things, my brain capacity is much lower than what it is in the morning, right? I am not in a flow. It's more of people are just coming at you and you're kind of going at a slower pace and I'm delegating. I I told you like in the mornings and the afternoons, I'll stop and I will delegate to my team the stuff I can move up my plate. So it's a full delegation day where I'm delegating stuff off, talking to people. It's a yellow time. And then my red time is after work where it's like, okay, these are the things that necessarily don't have to do with business, but it's time for me just to decompress right. time to, you know, be with my family. So red's not necessarily bad for me, but it's a time where it's not business. It's just more of a decompression now getting ready for the next day. And so I actually make my day actually go like that, but green, that four to 9am window, man, that's the money making time. Cause that's mm-hmm. when I'm actually learning to um, duplicate and scale my money, making my profitability over into the yellow so that when I hit yellow, it's just all like fly and go and move in, but it's okay. Cause I already made my money that morning. <laughs> That's exactly right. And your yellow time, as you were describing it, uh, reminded me of, of what my wife said her dad's job was when she was a high school uh, girl and the boys would come to their house to pick her up for a date. She said, my dad said, I'm the goalie. It's my job to keep them out of the goal. Your job in the yellow time of your day is to keep things out of your brain, keep things out, to delegate this. De- here it comes, delegate. Here it comes, catch it, delegate it, push it back. Because if you grab hold of one of those projects in the middle of your day, your day can go sideways in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Now, what if you've got to do that project, it needs to be done tomorrow morning in your green time. Mm-hmm when your brain is fresh and research shows us, I keep looking at my bookshelf, research shows us without a doubt, you're only capable of so many decisions in a day. Yes. And uh, you and I have been in meetings before and you'll go, whoop, I see you're done. Yeah. Let's talk about this later. In other words, my eyes have glazed over and my brain is going, hey, can't we do something else today? Um, yeah. You're only capable of so much decision-making in a, in a day. Yes. Get that done early. Yes. And there's a lot of tips and tricks and hacks that you can use to do that. Um, We'll discuss some of those next week when we do our session on on running technology. Um, But just a a real quick trick, you know, you were talking about people eating up your time and chatting in the office. And one of the great systems that we have set up is we use a a project management software and that's how our team communicates. We do not communicate through email to each other. It is strictly in this project management. We use Basecamp. That's what's fit us most, um, Basecamp.com. No plugin for them there. That's just what we use. And um, what makes it nice, Dan, is that the girls can assign tasks and communicate with me, but I actually can just have a high scope of what they're saying or what's going on. And I don't need to respond immediately. Like I know what's pending, what can sit there, but it gives you kind of this overall high vantage point of what's kind of on your plate. And you can decide where the meat is versus where the potatoes are. Right. Right. And so it cuts down all of that coming in, discuss having this full, you know, 30 minute discussion about a project. Everything is compartmentalized for you, you can prioritize it and you can respond back when needed instead of it interrupting what you have in front of you as a priority. There's just simple things like that that you can do that will really protect your time because I think that we all need about an extra 24 hours in our day, right? (laughs) Oh yeah, yeah. For years I said, if I could just stop the world for a few days and let me catch up, well, the world's never gonna stop. Right. It's time to manage or delegate and and. And of all the things that we've talked about this morning, if you can learn to delegate, if you can learn to hand off projects that are time consuming projects, whether they're valuable or not, if you can hand off those projects, then do so. Now, another word of caution. There are some pieces of your work that you absolutely must do yourself. No one else can be the creative director that you are. No one else can be the writer that I am. You can't hire someone else to do your push-ups for you. Mm -hmm. Those type activities you must do for yourself. So it's important that you know, and and mainly it's money-making activities. Some of that you got to do firsthand yourself. The, the, The busier work, the things that aren't as important, you can hand off. So um, I hope that's helped today. And, and um, 
let me finish with this. This needs to be done about every three months, about four times a year, you should do this project. The first time you do it, don't beat yourself up. Don't go, oh my God, I got too much red time during the day. Just realize what you're doing and your brain will begin to figure it out. In 90 days, do it again. And in small steps, little tiny, this is how you turn the Titanic. This is how you become an Olympic athlete. This is how you become world-class at anything, little small steps. Start small, change a little, try it again in 90 days, see how you're doing, refocus, take a knee, re-examine your world, if you do this four times a year, that's eight times over the next two years, make a commitment, go on and put it on your calendar. Now we're using this efficiently and go on and set up those days and in 90 days. And, and we're coming in the holidays here, the, the fall of the year, this is harvest time. We ought to be making good money. Um, try this right after the first of the year again. And then in the first quarter and in over a couple of years, you will, um, you will find that you are, are becoming more and more efficient. Yeah, I got a question from Valerie yeah. in our chat box. What percentage do you recommend for green versus yellow and red? I don't really have a, a percentage, Valerie. What, what my goal in life is to make my entire workday green activity. I've never achieved that. <laughs> don't know what that would even look like, but for the last 50 years in business, that's been my goal. Every day is a green day, all day, every day from nine to five. Okay. I've never gotten there, but you got to have a goal. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that, I mean, and you can't eliminate your red time. Like you say, that's evening, that's family, that's, mm -hmm. you know, going to the movies. I mean, my wife and I love sitting down watching a TV show and, um, you know, uh, eating dinner on the back porch that all gets recorded. Well, that's red time. It's time wasting activities, but you better waste some time with your spouse. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you, if you don't yeah. spend some time with your spouse, then all that green time in the world isn't going to make you happy. Yeah. So, I know in my own day, so I work 10 hours a day. That's always my commitment versus the eight hours. But for my first four hours is always green time. Yeah. And that's, that is not negotiable. Um, so for me, um, Valerie, what I end up doing is if it was an eight hour day or a 10 hour day or 20 hour day, whatever, however long I stay without sleep. But the point is, is that those first four hours I've, that I've set aside are unconditional and that you, you always set aside. And then however, the rest of the day goes with yellows and reds, so be it, but I'm always committed to at least four hours. So I would say, know what is capable for you and commit to those hours as your goal and say that no matter what, every day, this is how many hours I must get done. And if it goes past that in the green, fantastic, but I'd wow. never go below that. Um, it'll aggravate me because we did have family just come in. They went to stay up late and talk. And so I was waking up later than my 4 a.m. I got a little off schedule and I get aggravated with myself, but it was like, even if I'm waking up at six o'clock, those four hours are committed to green activities. Phone goes on silent, do not disturb. Email is closed on a computer. Those four hours are committed no matter what. And so that's what I do. Yeah, and, it, and those are irrevocable commitments to yourself. And we'll come back and talk about the contract and the commitment you have to your own self. And one is honoring your own commitment. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's really where self-esteem is earned instead of, I mean, no one can give you self-worth. You have to earn that yourself by giving yourself commitments and honoring them to yourself. You have a commitment to begin your day at 4 a.m. and you honor that commitment to yourself. Um, I usually tell people that, you know, green time should be the morning. Now, whatever your morning is, if you get to work at nine, well, it better be from nine till noon, better be your green time. Um, but um, you can't eliminate the red time. You can't eliminate the things that waste your time. It's just, do you manage them? And are you aware? Mm -hmm. um, I, I see people all the time 
I go in grocery stores and the employees are standing there going. Yeah. Ridiculous. You're not even in the building. You're lost in this device. Um, I have a picture of a man on a construction site doing that. And there is monster equipment like dump trucks and bulldozers going around him. He's still standing there. He's oblivious to the fact that he might be part of the pavement at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. is red time. That should never happen during your work day. And let me say this too, that you also could have your green time at night as well, depending on your personality. Because yes. I have some friends who they work best at night. So their four hour slot or whatever their green slot is actually happens from 10 o'clock until two. I have a friend who's brilliant and that's their right. deep flow time. So knowing your body, so it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order, but okay. I would agree for my schedule, it has to be morning because I have small kids, but naturally I would actually choose the evening. It's what I would naturally choose. Yeah. And see, I'm definitely a morning person. My best friend in life was always an evening person. So we would, we would mentally meet about 8 PM because <laughs> he's beginning to peak and I'm falling down the hill. Yeah. 